project. I mean to knock some of these vids out, and yes, I'm getting around to it right now. Just reviewed the Dagger 2 by SOG, SOG, as I like to call it. Great knife. There's a Boker Desert Dagger, previously reviewed. And of course, the outstanding and probably my favorite overall dagger, the Cold Steel Taipan. I've made references to that in several other videos, including my Dagger versus Bowie Dilemma, the combat blade considerations that I made. And I'll annotate that right here. I suggest you go look at that, and there's just a few considerations that you might want to think about when choosing a combat blade. And I'm talking about to someone who's in perhaps a law enforcement, more likely a soldiering type of function where CQB, close quarter battle, might be the order of the day. And just a couple things according to the way I think that you might want to consider. The dagger overall is a very purpose-built weapon. It's designed for the thrust attack. It's not designed for slicing bread, splitting limbs, utility tasks. It's designed for one and one and only purpose, if you ask me, and that's the thrust attack. And interestingly, all these three being reviewed already, I think uh, they represent kind of the differences in thickness or plan forms on the dagger design. I mentioned that as I spoke to the Taipan. Notice you see the dagger 2 is kind of a narrow blade. Then as we move into the Boker Desert Dagger, which is an Applegate Fairbairn design, broader blade. And I like those broader blade daggers. There's that Taipan. Broader still. And this is really the only dagger that came out of the box where I thought it had a really nice edge on it. I used to have a Gerber Mark I years ago. I used that for years. Busted the tip off of it. And again, just like I said in that vid, that's going to be a weak point of pretty much any dagger design. It's going to have a weak tip. If it goes against a hard substance, uh, expect problems. You know what I'm saying? Uh, by the way, battery on its last leg. If it dies, I'll just join the clips. Now, we're not going to talk about these three. We already have. Instead, I'm going to talk about value. These are all relatively expensive knives. This Taipan especially so. It's going to cost over $200 in some places. And again, I'm not going to talk to specifics. A little bit more, a little bit less. It just depends. The Boker Desert Dagger and the Dagger 2 or 1 also hovering over the $100 mark. Actually, probably right beneath it. It just depends. But a lot of people don't have that kind of money for these types of knives. And yet they might have a thing for daggers. Either they just like collecting them, like I do, second kind of cool, or on the first type of cool, they may have a POU that needs one. Like I mentioned, you might be engaged in some combat operations where a dagger with its multiple cutting capability might serve you well in the heat of the battle and in the fog of war. I think that's where the dagger can really excel if you train with it and if you're ready to use it as accordingly. But maybe you don't have, you know, $100, $200 to score one of these. Well, fret no more, and this is the subject of this review video by Nut and Fancy. Bam! The Warhead by Cold Steel. Yeah, I brought it in that other video, but this is a review on it. This is a $20 dagger. At least as of 2009, that's what it is. And I will tell you, for the money, it offers an incredible amount of value and cutting performance. Compared to this one, the Dagger 2, look at the differences in the plan form. That's what I call it. I'm talking about looking straight down on the blade, the overall shape of the blade, the plan form. Look at the differences. I mean, the Dagger 2 is very similar, like I previously mentioned, of the Gerber Mark II, the Vietnam era, and now in production again classic long bladed dagger and then the cold steel warhead much broader it's almost like a spear wouldn't you say I'll talk to that in a bit but yeah it's very broad and as such it, I think it's going to cleave and cut a lot better and do a lot of damage now let's talk a little bit about philosophy on the piercing or thrusting capabilities between the two designs you know it would be very easy to say that this is a very superior type blade for the thrust attack and I would probably agree with that overall I mean just you know thinking about physics and mechanically it's a thinner blade it's very stiff assuming it's very sharp it's going to penetrate well into a number of materials the warhead you might make the case of well it's a broader blade it's going to take more force 
to separate the material that you're stabbing into, whether it's, I don't know, heavy clothing, maybe it's, uh, you know, a wild pig or something. Yeah, it might take a little bit of more, more force. But I think that it's pretty much minuscule. You hear that? I don't think there is a huge amount of difference in the penetration capabilities between these two blades because this one's sharp, that one's sharp, and if this one's sharp, it's going to penetrate quite readily. I might prove that with some vids later, but I think that's pretty much going to be the case. So I wouldn't really fret it too much. If you're thinking about the second kind of cool, you need a dagger in your POU, and you go, you know what, this one's going to stab a lot better than a broad-bladed dagger. I really wouldn't worry about that. I think the warhead would serve nicely. And look at that blade. That is a big old blade, don't you think? Really big. Here, I yeah, that's a big blade. 9 inches to be exact, 14 inches overall length. And what's most remarkable to me about the 9 inch double edged broad spear type blade of the Warhead is that it still only weighs 9 ounces. And you know me, nothing fancy. Big on that weight issue, always will be, usually. Depends on what we're talking about. But that is a light carry weight for such a big blade. One reason for that, I think I've alluded to this in previous videos, is due to that hollow grinding on the blade. That removes a lot of the metal from the stock and you can see we don't start out with that thick of a uh, chunk of metal to begin with and then when we grind it down via hollow grinding to produce that double edged blade that makes a pretty lightweight and remarkably fast in hand double edged blade. And you gotta handle a warhead to really understand what I'm talking about. It is very fast in hand. And that is a big plus for the POU that I set forth for dagger type blades, i.e. close quarter combat. Now, a little bit of philosophy. I always go off on a tangent with philosophy, but it, hopefully it's interesting and enlightening. There is a different school of thought on how big of a blade you would want. Let's say we are choosing a dagger style blade. Isn't this blade too big for CQB? Uh, you can make an argument for that. When you get close, that that's probably an ungainly size, that maybe you'd want something smaller. And without pausing the camera, I don't have anything handy to show you, but something along the order of a 3 or 4 inch blade. Um, however, I always like standoff capability when I can. And standoff means I have a weapon that reaches farther than my adversary's weapon. So I don't have to close to within 3 inches of him in order well, you know, my arm length plus three inches to employ my knife. So it's a dilemma, really, and I don't know if I have the bottom answer on that. Uh, suffice it to say, I think the Warhead would be a good, maybe not outstanding, but a good CQB weapon, albeit it maybe it's a little bit on the large size. Uh, but I'm a fan of standoff capability. And it also depends on what PO you're talking about. You're talking about soldiers, you know, uh, doing urban combat over in Iraq, Afghanistan. You know, it depends. Maybe a smaller blade there would make sense because you would not be employing your blade in that POU unless your gun failed or you were disarmed, and chances are it's going to be in very close contact when you do. You can make the case there, there, um, thereof that maybe the warhead is too big of a knife to withdraw and use in those very tight confines. I can understand that, and I would respect that logical argument. Um, however, maybe in a civilian sheepdog role, maybe the length would be better because a standoff capability, keeping the bad guy at bay, assuming he's out the three, three foot circle. I mean, you can see we could armchair this all day long and probably never come up with the right answer. But just know that the knife is so cheap, $20, I really don't see a reason why you wouldn't add it to your inventory to have the capability. You might need the POU to say, you know what, today I think would be a good day for the warhead, judging by what I think is coming down the road in my mission today. So a couple thoughts to think about. Back to the weight and the speed though. 9 ounce carry weight uh, for the blade itself. Add 2 more ounces for the sheath. And the sheath is, I'll get to that in a second, 2 more ounces, 11 ounces total. That's a light carry weight. That's lighter than the Dagger 2, than the SOG GovTac, which are about 14 ounce knives in carrying. And lighter than a K-Bar. A lot of knives, and yet you still have that broad cutting surface. And I really hate to even refer to this as a dagger blade. To me, it's more like a broad blade spear design, because that's what it's modeled after. I think that's 
Uh, I mean, they make reference in the catalog again that it's modeled after a, a frontier knife called the Trade Dag in the Cold Steel catalog. I don't know much about that, but it's more of a spear than a dagger in my mind. And that gets to the choice of metals that Cold Steel has chosen, or metal, in this blade. This is not 1095, it's not SK5, and it's not a high carbon non-stainless tool steel. It is 1055, which in my mind is a medium carbon steel that won't have outstanding edge characteristics. It will keep an edge, but it will probably dull relatively quickly compared to some other offerings that I just mentioned. However, when we have a blade like this that is very capable of being lashed to a spear, it almost begs to it, lashed to a pole to become a, a hunting implement or maybe even a self-defense implement, then I think 10, 1055, i.e. a medium carbon content steel is a good choice. Because in that POU, we want toughness. You know, if you're going to take maybe an AUS-8 steel blade, which has good stainless characteristics, good edge holding characteristics, and you were to lash this to a pole and start smacking around and probably miss that wild pig you're hunting, I can pretty much guarantee on your first tries, uh, and you, I don't know, hit a rock, what are the chances of your blade breaking? Probably pretty good because uh, it's not a super tough steel because we have to give up maybe some toughness for better edge holding and that means higher carbon content depending on the steel. I'm just using this as an arbitrary example. Back to the warhead though, is that medium carbon content will make for a very tough blade. One that's going to have a lot of impacts, maybe in thrust attack, maybe some hacking attacks against hard substances. It's a tougher steel that will not shatter on you. It may go dull, but at least you'll have it in one piece as opposed to like 30 pieces. That's why they use 1055 steel. How's that handle? Well, actually, the Warhead is offered, or at least was offered, in two handles. This was my favorite. This is was the Paracord, 550 Paracord wrapped handle. has a leather insert in it. I'll use my Spyderco Delica as my pointer today. Underneath the Paracord, and that kind of helps fill it out a little bit. That being said, I think the Paracord handle is a little bit on the narrow side. When you grasp it and hold it, um, Lengthwise, this dimension here, adequate. Widthwise, it leaves a little bit to be desired. If you guys have huge problems with that, just grab your camera form, which I've talked about in other videos, comes in other brands too. Choose your color of choice and wrap your handle until you get the thickness you want. I think camera form, which is basically based on the medical bandage technology, which adheres only to itself, great material. And just wrap that handle until you get the thickness you want. Currently, the warhead that Cold Steel is selling, of course, this is always subject to change, cancellation, revisement, all that, uh, is polycarbonate, I believe, or plastic scales on the side. The advantage of those is it has two screws. You can completely take the handle slabs off. Uh, just by looking at the picture, that's what it looks like. And then you'll just have a bo bare bones, you know, your spear blade that you can lash. I think the 550 handle will not have to be taken off to do that. I will probably try that in future vids. Stay tuned and the nice thing is I'm just going to leave it in place, wrap it as is. I'm talking to a pole and turn it into a spear. These plastic handles though on this model warhead look like they have some sharp corners. I don't know why manufacturers continue to insist, depending on the knife, to put sharp uh, 90 degree corners on handles of knives. It doesn't work. Our hand is not square. It we like grasping, you know, objects that are more ergonomic and better fitted to the hand. And a square shouldered knife handle is uh, not that. By the way, in the catalog we go here, they talk about the 1055 having the spring temper. Great choice. That's what I want for a knife that might be employed as a spear. I want something that's rugged and durable. I forgot to mention it. They make a point of that. And here's another thing, a little bit of philosophy for you guys. If a knife has a certain feature... I can pretty much guarantee you that the manufacturer is going to brag about it. Dig? In other words, they're not going to put some feature in a knife, either a really good steel, a really good tempering job, maybe micarta scales, without letting you know. Unless they're dumb. And most manufacturers are not dumb. They want to sell blades. And they'll make a point of showing you what 
type of features the blade has. And again, the Cold Steel catalog is one of my favorites. They do a very good job in doing that. No, I'm not on the Cold Steel payroll. I just acknowledge good copy when I see it. And like I said, they're making a point to tell you this is a spring-tempered blade in the warhead. So back to the handle. Um, you're probably, if you're going to order one, you're going to get that polycarbonate handle version. I think you'll probably like it. Hopefully those shoulders aren't too square. There's your tang protruding out. I think like you saw in that other one, the plastic scales go all the way to the end of the tang with the new warhead. Is that a hammerable tang? Is that something I would hammer tent stakes with? Uh, well, with this version, the paracord wrapped one, you could thrash on it. I mean, heck, it's only a $20 knife. Thrash on it. Do what you can with it. Um, but, you know, it's not flat, so it's going to have a tendency to mushroom out or split whatever you're hitting, especially if it's a wooden tent stake. So, you know, compared to like the SOG GovTac that has a purpose built, you know, pommel that's designed for hammering, this is going to be far superior. I mean, that's just what it is. Um, there's a couple lash straps right here, our lash grooves for turning into a spear yet again. Made in China, quality control is good. I really don't care. Some guys have issues with that. And your guard is adequate for what it is. And I think for what it is, is a combat knife slash survival knife with some caveats. And the caveats are like this, and i got to wrap it up because I'm running out of time. This is not a survival knife along the lines of let's say an Ontario SP5. You've seen that in action with nothing fancy. K-Bar Heavy Bowie. That's a big bladed, wide, great chopping, hacking, splitting knife that you can build fires and wilderness shelters with. These are survival knives uh, all around in the terminology of nothing fancy. And again, I don't really subscribe to any anybody's terminology, no forums terminology. I don't care about that. I just go with what makes sense. Um, but in their copies, uh, Cold Steel does make reference to the warhead being a survival knife. It is not a survival knife in the term of, or in the realm of these blades. These bigger blades are capable of splitting logs, hacking. I think when they mention the survival capabilities of the warhead, they're talking about turning it into a spear and then hunting with it. And I think in that POU, that makes a lot of sense. And with the light carry weight that it represents, 11 ounces total, I think you'd be smart to consider it in your kit for that exact purpose. Remember my deer snare video, by the way? Remember I said I would fashion a spear to dispatch the animal with, probably using my blade at the time I had the K-bar with me? That would work just fine. This would be even better. And that broad, double-edged blade would just do a lot of damage in uh, you know, put the animal out of its miser misery sooner rather than later, and that's what I want to minimize suffering. Let's look at the sheath real quick, and then we'll end it. This is a sheath, nothing special, nothing to write home about. There's no quick attachment capability built into the sheath, and by that I mean kind of like on the SOG sheaths, there's no American Sportsman's clips or you know, Blade Tech type offerings, Lock Tech that you can put on your belt. But it's a $20 knife, guys. So keep that in mind. And for what it is, I like the sheath. At least it isn't made of leather. It's made of Cordura. It's riveted, stitched. It has reinforcements on the tip. has a fabric, fabric retention strap on it. It works. It's nothing special. But the good things are that it is riveted, reinforced. And, you know, I'm looking at this now. I hope the blade doesn't ever contact those rivets. See how the rivets kind of go past the stitching? Uh, I'm not going to try it, but they might protrude to the point inside the sheath that you could actually rub your blade against it. Be careful of that, because otherwise you're dulling your blade each time. But back to the sheath. It is lightweight. It's trim. It only adds two ounces. And if you want to strap that onto your gear system, it's going to be a pretty easy affair to do. Just use Ranger rubber bands, maybe 550 cord. Since we don't have any rivet holes around the perimeter, that might be a little bit trickier to get an absolute secure um, attachment to whatever you're going on. Again, I kind of think it might be a little bit on the large size for LBE. It just depends on what your uh, POU is. And there's your belt loop. Nothing special there. $20 knife. That's a cold steel warhead. It will function just like I said it will. Stay tuned. You're probably going to see me uh, playing with this blade, testing it a little bit. i got to find something to uh, go whack with it. Whew, that fancy. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for the good ratings and support. I don't do it without you. Won't do it without you. See ya.